In this video, I want to talk about the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Okay, if we're praying for someone, we want to be able to um, ask God on their behalf for a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Okay, and if we do get something from the Lord, then we need to work out how to share that in an appropriate manner. So first, let's deal with your heart attitude. What does it mean to be? You want to be giving people something that's from the Lord, not from something that's just out of your own head. Okay, so our heart attitude should be, Lord, I want to be open to receive something from you so that you can minister to this person through me. Part of that preparation is also asking the Lord to help us to be sensitive to what he wants to say to them. So that's part of setting up our heart, getting our heart ready so that we can minister. So how do you minister if you think the Lord has given you something? And the first answer of this is you need to minister with caution, okay? This is especially the case if you haven't had a lot of experience uh, ministering in the gifts of word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Another thing is just there's some areas that you need to be cautious about. Some of those areas are the whole issue of relationships, so dates and mates. Um, you need to be careful when you're talking about children, blessings of children. Okay, sometimes that issue will come up. Okay, you, you just need to be sensitive about that. It's not a good idea for you to start talking about those things if you really haven't heard from the Lord. So extra caution is warranted. Another area is finances and issues to do with real estate and things like that. If you think that the Lord's given you something about that, then you need to make sure that you're careful how you frame it to the person that you're presenting it to. Okay, so you've got to be mindful if you're ministering of people's personal, psychological and emotional safety. Okay, you're, you've got to really just be careful about this because you're ministering stuff and if you don't know it's true then you've got to be careful and you can say up front to someone um, if you don't think that this word aligns with your experience okay please make sure you put it aside put it on the shelf just put it out of the way okay and seek for God to confirm it because a prophetic word or a prayer or something that God reveals through you as a minister needs verification okay um, and if you are unsure whether you've got it right put it to people in that sense i think i've got this from the lord for you but i'm not sure so if it doesn't align with what god's already shown you or even if you think it might align you still need further verification you still need to follow other processes to confirm it okay that's just part of the the required safety, the, the kind of context for safety that you need to have. Tell them, if uh, you think this word doesn't align with stuff God has shown you previously, then you need to just put it on the shelf and just see what the Lord shows you in regard to it, okay? It might become relevant later on, okay? But that's the important thing that... Um, it does need verification. Okay, so let's go through a checklist of things that you should check in your own heart before you're ministering any kind of words to other people. So you do your preparation first. Lord, I want to share something with this person to bless them. Okay? Lord, I don't want to just speak out something that's uh, of, from myself. I would rather just stay silent. Okay? So you're asking, you know, I want to speak something that's from you, Lord, okay? Not just something that's out of my own creation, out of my own head. Lord, I pray that if you're going to, if I'm going to share something that would be a real message from you, I pray that you would guide me and um, that would be a real word from you and that you would say something to this person through me. And then there's getting into the anointing. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit would come on me as I minister okay and that you would guide me and help me to be open to follow the leading of your holy spirit and if you're making a response 
Um, you can say, uh, after they've given you feedback on a word that you've given, you can say something like, um, okay, thanks for your response, because I'm just trying to learn to listen to the Lord and what that means. I don't think I always get it right, so your honest response is going to help me learn. Okay, so I appreciate that. Okay, if they did make a connection, follow up on it. Okay, practice your skills with this or practice learning to receive a word from the Lord in an environment where it's okay to do it. Okay, so you need a safe environment where it's okay to practice these skills um, so that you can learn to hear from the Lord and learn to recognize his voice. And working in pairs with someone else is a good way to do this and, and seeking a, a word from the Lord for them and then practicing that. Uh, and then that will help you also getting their feedback and, and whether what you were saying was online or not will help inspire confidence or give you confidence when it comes to these skills, um, which is listening to the Lord is the skill, okay? So if you are learning to listen to the Lord and discern what he's saying to you, that's part of this. All right, so that's a little bit on how to start out and learning and how to apply the word of knowledge to your ministry, okay? Um, this is, uh, you'll have opportunities to do this. Now, there are words of knowledge outside of just an individual word of knowledge for a person or a word of wisdom for a person. There's also words of knowledge and words of wisdom that apply to messages given in church, okay? If God has a word of knowledge for the church or God has a word of knowledge is a word, um, a word of wisdom for the church, um, he can also give those, okay? Um, and that's something different. It's a little bit different too from prophecy, okay? Because God's revealing knowledge. That's what a word of knowledge is. Or God is revealing a piece of wisdom. And that's what a word of wisdom is. Okay, and that's how they are different from prophecy, where prophecy is God speaking to the church in general. There might be a message that a prophet shares um, and words of wisdom and words of knowledge are varieties of those gifts. As I said, sometimes there's that aspect where they apply to an individual, um, which you could be ministering one-on-one -on -one to an individual and God will use a word of knowledge to encourage them or instruct them. Um, and similarly, there could be a word of wisdom that you give to someone um, from the Lord for someone. Okay, so there are those individual aspects and corporate aspects, okay, where God speaks wisdom to the church or God speaks uh, knowledge to the church. Okay, so you're looking for those in prophetic messages to the church as well. And another thing that I'll deal with sometime is messages in tongues now you could say why do we have messages in tongues in the church if there's just prophecy is if it's the same as prophecy if you give an interpretation of it well i think that there is a specific reason why there are messages in tongues in the church and it has to do with how we pray to god okay um, sometimes there's prayers that can be offered up, okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about inspired prayer and, and um, that a message in tongues can be an inspired form of prayer in the church service. So someone will offer a, a praise or a prayer to God in tongues, okay? And then there'll be an interpretation. Um, God doesn't speak messages to the church in tongues, um, he speaks, there's something that someone will speak out to the Lord in tongues, okay? And that is because it's a communication between man and God. Um, Paul says this, that um, when the person speaks in tongues, they're not speaking to people, but they're speaking to God. But having said that, having someone speak in tongues to the Lord as a message in the church and then having the communication of that and its interpretation is a valuable thing, okay? Um, and it's a legitimate form of, of worship and, and move of the Holy Spirit for that to happen, okay? So a little bit about speaking in tongues 
when a person speaks in tongues, they're speaking to God. So that kind of implies it's going to be a prayer or praise or worship. Okay, and that narrows then the field for what the interpretation is going to cover. Unless God decides to reveal a mystery in tongues to the church, okay, and then someone interprets it and gives the interpretation, um, my feeling is that usually because of the nature of tongues, it will be a message to God, okay? Um, the Holy Spirit's able to do more than that, though there might be his reasons for why he would give a message to the church and then provide it through an interpretation. But usually, um, I would think that most messages in tongues are praises or prayers to, to God as the believer prays and speaks to God in tongues. Um, so that's a, a kind of little revelation that the Holy Spirit's even just given me then because I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, but that's something to consider. Uh, certainly when I get, do these videos, sometimes the Lord reveals things to me and that helps um, develop my understanding of things as well. And that's just something about how God can speak to you. Even if you're doing instruction, God can be showing you things as you're doing them. And that's okay. That's the anointing. God's bringing a revelation. He's bringing um, some truth that you didn't understand before. Uh, and as you do things, God is working through you and delivering a message through you to others um, or through you to instruct others. Okay, so have a think about that one. Um, as God shows you the light, his light in your heart about it, um, that's part of this whole idea that God reveals stuff to the church through these words. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Um, I've pretty much covered words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Um, I've foreshadowed stuff about uh, that I would like to continue to speak about messages in tongues and God willing I'll soon be able to give a message in tongues and provide examples of, of how the gift of tongues as a message in the church works. It's a little bit different because the mandate is there for providing an interpretation so it's not a personal prayer language thing it's a message for the church or to God in tongues given in the church and then God providing an interpretation about that um, to the church to give us understanding of what the person has just prayed. All right, so um, that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, um, please like or subscribe. Um, we'll finish off maybe with a prayer today. Um, someone made a very good point about praying in videos. That it is really a good idea to to pray in videos, okay? And and that's something that I think also should be applied. I mean, we all have our own personal prayer life as Christians, but it's a good idea for us to pray. And there's some things that I would like to pray about now, so let's go and do that. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that um, you're here with us. We thank you that you are the author of the spiritual gifts, gifts of prophecy, gifts of knowledge, gifts of wisdom and, and gifts of speaking messages in tongues. And Lord, we pray that if we are to do this, that it would be only from you, not at something out of our own minds, not something out of our own heads, not something from someone else, but only something from you, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit would inspire us and ignite within us the flame and the purpose and the power and the boldness to speak your word, Lord, to speak boldly in the name of Jesus, the revelation and the things of Jesus and share good things with our brothers and sisters in Christ as you provide them, as you inspire them, as you ignite those thoughts in our hearts and in our minds. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have not stopped speaking today. We thank you, Jesus, that, um, that you are still here, that you have not left us as orphans, we thank you that you are always with us and in us by your Holy Spirit. And we pray that uh, as we go out into our churches, as we seek to minister, and we seek you to minister through us to others, we pray that you would bless us and encourage us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. 
Okay, so if you enjoyed that video, please um, provide me with likes and, and maybe subscribe to my channel. That would be really good. Uh, I want to see some more encouraging likes and subscriptions to my channel. Um, and I hope that God blesses you with the information that I've shared today. And I hope that um, you'll enjoy this video and the next video in time to come. All right, thanks.